September 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hebrews chapter 3 from the New Testament. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, partners in a heavenly calling, take note of Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest whom we confess, who is faithful to the one who appointed him as Moses was also in God's house. For he has come to deserve greater glory than Moses just as the builder of a house deserves greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant, to testify to the things that would be spoken. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house. We are of his house, if in fact we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope we take pride in. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Oh, that today you would listen as he speaks. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of testing in the wilderness. There your fathers tested me and tried me, and they saw my works for forty years. Therefore I became provoked at that generation and said, Their hearts are always wandering, and they have not known my ways. As I swore in my anger, they will never enter my rest." See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has an evil, unbelieving heart that forsakes the living God. But exhort one another each day as long as it is called today, that none of you may become hardened by sin's deception. For we have become partners with Christ if in fact we hold our initial confidence firm until the end. As it says, O that today you would listen as he speaks. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For which ones heard and rebelled? Was it not all who came out of Egypt under Moses' leadership? And against whom was God provoked for forty years? Was it not those who sinned whose dead bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear they would never enter into his rest, except those who were disobedient? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. God, we know from many passages, many, many passages in the Bible, that Christians can't lose their salvation if they truly are saved. That is up to you. If you allow us to be saved, uh, then as it clearly says in the Bible, no one can snatch us from your hands. However, this particular chapter is a huge warning that there are many who can play that game, um, not being possibly intentionally deceptive but not being truly saved and in the process their hearts become hardened and it shows clearly from this chapter that they were never saved in the first place what I find interesting is the perseverance part of you have told us we can enter into your rest we can call on you for strength we can call on you for wisdom and you'll provide it Uh, You allow us to test you as far as our tithing goes. We are given all these opportunities to tap into that perseverance. And sometimes when it gets hard, um, our hearts do become frustrated. There's times in relationships where things ebb and flow. Um, Not with you. You're consistent with us because we're human. And... Christians struggle with this, but you have promised us that that perseverance will always be there, that we'll never get to the part if we're truly saved of having a hardened heart. Part of this too is put upon the church, and I don't think we take this strongly enough, this this word of warning as a church, that we are to support each other, encourage each other, call upon each other, pray for each other we are to help each other in this walk as well so besides just calling upon you and your strength for this perseverance we are to help one another and call on one another and i would say in this day and age especially with the internet ironically that we don't call upon each other we don't want to bother anyone we're we're so busy with our own lives right Um, that we don't see those around us who seem to be struggling. Now again, I know that if they're truly saved, that struggling will eventually turn back into perseverance. Um, Their hearts won't become hardened, but us as a church, God, we're called to help them during those struggles. And I just ask you today, I just plead with you today that if anybody around me that I know or that I don't know is is struggling or is in that, that time of 
confusion and frustration in that relationship that they would just either open up to me or open up to somebody else or that we would take that opportunity and you would give us that discernment and that insight to know that somebody is struggling and, and we could approach them, that we could set aside all this busyness that we seem to be involved with and approach them and help them with that. God, remind us that we are supposed to be here for each other, that all of us, every single person listening to this video right now has struggles. Most of them we don't ever know about. Um, most people have uh, vicious things that happen in their life, whether health or relationships or, or financial, who knows. But in those situations, we can call on you and trust in you in, in that strength. And we can also and should also be able to call upon each other to help strengthen and support the church while we're here on earth. God, thank you for that perseverance, for giving us hearts that are saved and can never be hardened against you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.